uh, and he's building his church, right? And he's using us to do it. So glory to God. Thank you that I'm not alone and that we're doing this together. But um, that being said, will you re- go ahead and read uh, 1 Cor- Corinthians? I think it's 12, right? Or maybe I'm wrong. Yes, it is. All right. Sorry. My Sorry. thing's loading. Sorry, loading. First world problems. It is. Okay, I'll just read it from here. It says, um, this is 1 Corinthians 12, 14. It says, for the body does not consist of one limb or organ, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, would it be therefore not a part of the body? If the ear should say, because I am not the eye, I do not belong to the body, would it therefore not be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God has placed and arranged the limbs and organs in the body, each particular one of them, just as he wished and saw fit and with the best adaptation. And so um, we shared this last night at team night, but just this um, passage of scripture. And if you even read further into Corinthians 12, he's comparing the body of Christ to a body with many limbs and organs. And how many of you know, without certain parts of your body functioning right, what would happen? Your body would be messed up. Mm -hmm. It'd be very messed up. And so God, God's design is for diversity in his body, right? Just like this said, if I'm comparing myself to the eye or I don't see the value of the eye, that really hurts me. And hurts the whole body. And sometimes I think we, we try to compare ourselves as individuals to another person's gift or their supply. Don't do that. Be you. Yeah. And this is something that God's just been really highlighting with us is just for us to be us, but also for this local house. You know, there is the big body of Christ. And then inside that big body, there's local churches, or we could say specific individual members, mm-hmm. churches. Yeah. And you know what? It's easy for churches to compare one another and to say, well, they're highlighting on that, so I need to highlight on that. They, they focus on this, so we need to do that. But you know what? God's like, no, you're the I. So be the I and be set in who you are. And so this is just something that Pastor Nate and I have just been talking to the Lord about and praying toward and just over and over the word, confirming words, just being us, being who we are, being settled in who we are. And um, so I don't know if you want yeah, to. Yeah, so just being settled in who we are and ultimately just following the leading of the Lord as, as we go because assignments change, seasons change. Um, and what we're going to be doing um, is we're going to be taking the two services, you know, a month and a half ago, uh, really in the middle of the summer as we began to talk about uh, just um, the, po- the power of the altar, and I've been talking to you as a church about just the Lord saying, bring that back, uh, and, and in the summer, as we are coming into the next quarter, or the, in the fall, feeling like, man, get it closer, you know, talk to our family, and so we tightened up the services, but we waited until the start of the launch of the third quarter, or the fourth quarter, uh, so for scheduling purposes and things like that, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the two services that we move closer, because that's just still not to get, it's not doing what I felt in my heart to do, and we're going to go all the way together, and we're going to make one service um, on, yeah, so I'm excited about that, right? So it's uh, December, December 10th, uh, not 10th, December 1st, so coming up just in two weeks, we're just making the switch, because I, I just, you know, you're like, ah, yeah, I don't, you know, so you can, you, you can reason away the voices, you know, the, 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 the direction of your heart, because so many times when, when, when assignments change, we have this idea that, that this is how assignments look, Right? And like on the outside, but God, God's direction and his assignment, uh, working on the right thing is this. Whether you were called to be a CEO of a company and, and, and everyone knows your name, or now you leave that company on assignment to go in part and start something, you know, that's going to have based on the direction of the Lord. Nobody knows your name. You don't have the corner office. You got the garage office. How many of you know, so many times we think, well, if you were this, Fortune 500, you should be this. Like we, we measure, even in the things in the direction of the Lord, we think, well, if you were a youth pastor, you should be senior pastor. If you're a senior pastor, you should be like, I don't know, head of the whatever. I don't know. I mean, but no, you follow the Lord. And so, um, and I told the Lord, I said, you know, this is part of my argument was like, Lord, our numbers are better. Our finances are better. Our savings accounts are better. All these things are better. I don't want to go back. He said, I didn't ask you to go back. I asked you to do what I said. So um, we're going to do that. And we're going to, it's kind of like I was talking to uh, one of our board members uh, about this decision in my heart. Uh, Trey Bollinger is a really good friend. We also talked hunting on the same conversation. The windows in my deer stand were froze shut, so I had to make a phone call because I couldn't hunt even if I saw one, you know. So, um, 
Anyway, and so we were just talking about, uh, talking about this change in this direction, and we were just talking about how cool it is when, when you know, it's amazing how you as, uh, as a, if you could imagine, we're like logs, right, um, in a fire. It's amazing how they continue to burn, but there's something that happens uh, even when they're pulled apart, right, and to, but when you put them together, there's something that's more powerful that happens. The, bur- the blaze becomes brighter. Uh, the draw is greater. Um, there's a gathering around if, effect of it, if you will, and, and there's an expectancy uh, that, that, that's created uh, when we gather. So I'm excited about that, excited about not just building here, but multiplying uh, and seeing the work of God expand uh, beyond these four walls. So anyway, with that being said, that's the announcement. One service, 10 o'clock will be the time starting December 1st. So if you come early, hey, you'll have some coffee and you get the fellowship. If you come late, well, hey, praise the Lord, you'll catch the last end of, of the altar and maybe get saved or something. So um, <laughs> anyway... Right, so let's jump right into the word this morning. Uh, can we can we just uh, pray before we do? Father, thank you so much uh, just for bringing us here today. Lord, we just right now we position our heart, uh, we open our heart to you. Uh, that's our choice. We make a choice this morning to listen to what you have to say and tune in to the voice of our heart. And we thank you that you're speaking. And then when we seek, uh, you said that we would find. And so this morning, we're just seeking what you would say to us, um, and I thank you that we're coming out in Jesus' name, amen. And so um, the, I'm going to launch into this, in this uh, last night we had team night, and, it was, and I was Nate Saban. Um, in other words, I was talking to our team, we had uh, family Thanksgiving uh, kind of set, and, and as coaches, we kind of came into the house and just talked and brought the culture of of, of the school, right? Or you know how uh, even like last night when OU uh, beat the Baylor Bears, they're over there in the end zone doing this after they lost and, you know, doing the bear claw, you know, or whatever it was after they lost. I thought, man, that's, that's tough. But anyway, um, <laughs> character building, right? Uh, tradition. But anyway, we were talking and just some things that we got to know as a team. Um, you ever, legs are so long, you don't know what to do with them? Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, you know, some, sometimes you're, you, yeah. Anyway, so back on point, back on point because we don't have that much time to get, get to where we need to go. Um, we were just talking about some things that we need to know, but, but what started all this, I'm not going to talk about the three, some three things that we need to be giving our ear to. Um, we're going to start and we're going to branch from this, this thought that we are a team, okay? The body of Christ, right? It's, it's a team. And this, this thought that, um, that we got to understand two things right now is that we are playing away, okay? You know how sometimes you get to play on your home turf? The Bible says that we're in this world, we're not of this world, right? He tells us to bring the kingdom here. Like how many of you know it's really amazing when, when a team goes to play at an away stadium and it still looks like their color? How many of you know that's powerful, that's powerful. There ain't no away when you're, you know, this team, right? So, but, but we are playing away, right? And so it's really important that we know that, that we're, the, 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 the stadium in which we're playing, you could call the setting, is this world, right? Um, you weren't created, uh, uh, this is not home. Uh, so you might feel uncomfortable. There'll be things that, you know, aren't as at, by design or the way that your father would design them for you. Um, but so we're playing away, but so that's key to know, and that we're away, and we're playing more than just our opponent. When you play away, you play more than just your opponent. You're saying, what are you talking about? We're not just playing. Uh, Bible says in, in, in Ephesians that we don't wrestle, or our opponent is not flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and rulers of weakness and heavy, right? So it's telling us that, that the, there is a wrestle or a contest, if you were to break that down, that's happening, and it's not between man, it's against Satan. That's, that's what the Bible tells us, right? Um, and so there is a work against you, uh, but you're not only fighting against the opponent. When you go to an away gym or you go to an away stadium, the, the, there's more than those that are just on the field that make a difference in the game, and those are called the fans, how many of you know that's true? How many of you know the fans, when they get down and momentum shifts, how many of you know if the fans could stay up, momentum could keep going their way? How many of you know that that's true? Um, but, but, and so the fans, you know what they have? A voice. They have a voice. And we were talking uh, about just the power 
of voices and the power of voices that we that we listen to and um, and how uh, the the that which we uh, entertain the voice that we entertain uh, we give access to in our life the voice that I'm entertaining I'm giving access to in my life and. Um, and there's a couple of passages we're going to look at this morning. Uh, one of them, the children of Israel, uh, and then the other one, Lazarus, you know, coming out. Uh, both of them, uh, there was a voice um, that would allow them to come out or, or to, to bow out. And voices, it's amazing how voices are, are all, the voices of a fan is always about the outcome. Voices are always about the outcome. So the, 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 the cheer of, uh, you're cheering because you're trying to create an outcome. Listen, the Father, ha- is, He's speaking to you today. He, you're in the place, whether you're listening or not, He's, he's speaking, and He's speaking to, to create an outcome, right? Or so, to, to have you come out, to have you come up, to have you come And, and so, is, so is your enemy. You loser! You worthless piece of trash. Your mama. I sat. We sat one one time. We were in the hog pen uh, at, at the at, uh, up in Bomb Stadium. There, I don't know if it's changed names or something like that now. But at the time, Bomb Stadium, and we're sitting there, and we're right up next to the edge. And there's there's a guy in uh, har- harassing the left fielder. He knows stats about, you know, the time he dropped the ball and this and, hey, your girlfriend. And, and he's like, he's pulling up stuff. It's like he made it his job to simply harass, harass, harass. And the left fielder ignored it for a while, but now he's doing this. Voices, he's hearing it. He's hearing it. And, you know, a lot of times we're hearing things, um, but, but we, we, huh? It's 9.45 a.m. Thank you, Siri. Uh, voices. But a lot of times we're hearing things on the inside, right? And, but, um, but we're using our voice on the outside. Somebody, like we're singing a song, and I'm sitting here, and I just give you a little picture in, into my heart. We're singing um, this last song about... Uh, Bowing on my knees in worship. And I'm thinking, I'm like, if we say that again, I can't help but get on my knees if I'm going to even remotely sing that. Because we listen to voices, we, we say things, but what often is disconnected between the voices we're listening to and the voices that we say or the voice, our voice, is our choice. And if we would start choosing and, and recognize that, that both when I say something, I can say something and not make a choice like, I love you, I forgive you, I, I this, I this. But if we would pay more attention to the choice, right, than just, just the voice, because what's happening is, is Siri, my, I, my mic's falling off, if, um, if we would give more attention to the voice, or excuse me, our, my, my choice, the choice I'm making Um, And the thing about it is, is the voice I'm listening to is what's painting the picture for my choices. How many of you know the voice that I'm listening to is like, ah, it's like this is the only choice I have is to get eaten by giants, right? Or or go back to go back to Egypt or just die in the wilderness, right? Because of the voice that we're listening to. And um, anyway, so I'm going to kind of drop that off right right there. You can open up. Oh, open up to that. Are you going to jump into numbers there? Um, yes, so let's go to numbers 13. And in this story, um, if you were here um, two Wednesday nights ago, um, Mona kind of hit on this passage, and I told Pastor Nate there's just so much here that um, was speaking that I kind of kept kept going in it, but Numbers thirteen twenty one, and I'm going to read it here out of the um, message. And so this is the spies. So Moses sent out the 12 spies to go spy out the promised land, okay? Something that what? God had promised them. 
This wasn't just like, hey, go look at land. This is something that they knew. This is our land. This yeah. is our promise. Um, so with that, they were on their way. They scouted out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob toward, sorry, I'm not reading all that. Their route went through the Negev desert to the town of Hebron. And then these guys, descendants of the giant of Anak, lived there. Hebron had built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. When they arrived, they cut off a branch with a single cluster of grapes. It took two men to carry it, slung on a pole. They also picked some pomegranates and figs, and they named the place Grape Cluster Valley because of the huge cluster of grapes they had. After 40, 40 days of scouting out the land, they returned home. They presented themselves before Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness. They reported to the whole congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told the story of their trip. So this is where it gets good. Good and bad. We went to the land to, to which you sent us, and oh, it does flow with milk and honey. Just look at this fruit. The only thing is, see, this is where they should have stopped there. Mm -hmm. But then you know what they said? But the only thing, the only thing is that the people who live there are fierce. Their cities are huge and well fortified. Worse yet, we saw descendants of the giant Anak. Amicalites are spread out in the Negev. Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites hold the hill country, and the Canaanites are established on the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan. And then I love this. Caleb interrupted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Called for silence before Moses and said, let's go up and take the land now. We can do it. And I wrote in my notes, what thoughts, what suggestions of the enemy am I interrupting? You know what I see Caleb doing here? He was with, he was a part of the 12 spies. You know, he saw the, the same picture that these spies saw. Yep. The same giants, the same picture, the promised land, he saw it. And you know what? I can picture him. It's just like bubbling up. He's hearing, yeah, it does flow with milk and honey, but this, this, this. We can't have it, this, this, this. And finally, he's just like, stop. Like, what thoughts have we let just keep rolling around in our head? What suggestions have we just let keep rolling around in our head that we just need to interrupt them? Yep. And we just need to say, stop it. Yeah, you give an access. Whatever you entertain, yeah. you're giving access to what? Your heart. Yep. To your heart. To, to, that's, where, that's where it gets in. You know, the, the fans are, are all about, and these voices, they're interrupting us all the time. Mm -hmm. You're trying to say down, and they're like, ah! and you're trying to say down, ha, 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 on three, but there's, there's interruption. They're trying to change your and my, and my destiny. I, I love this, this. We want to hit on this as we, uh, the offense part, yeah. all right? And so, you know, it's interesting how that there's all these types and shadows in the Old Testament to the New. They were there for how long? How long did Jesus go into the wilderness to be tempted? So, so there's a similarity there, right? We're going to tie those together. It's interesting how if you look at the time when Jesus was in the wilderness, Satan the tempter came and he tempted him, uh, it really, if you were to break those down, to be offended with God. The same way that, that the enemy tempted Adam in the garden, Adam and Eve, is to be offended with God. And here, they're there in the wilderness for 40 days after having seen miracle after miracle after miracle that God did in Egypt. And now they're in a tight place. And you think just maybe they're in this place of temptation, right? They're being tempted to, to curse God. They're being tempted to complain. They're being tempted to go, God, why have you brought us here? And beginning to grumble and beginning to complain. And the grumble or giving voice doesn't start until it's been given voice. Like we've been listening to it. It's been, we've been entertaining the thought. I wonder what thoughts are coming out of your mouth that have been in there a whole long time. I wonder what's about to come out tomorrow based on what was allowed to be put in last week or last month or whatever, and all of a sudden you're just going to blow up, right? But I think it's God's best would be that we would come out, right? And we'd come out of the place of offense, because here's what happens is, is any time, uh, you can recognize this, any time there's offense in my heart or ought, there's ought with somebody, there's ought against God, I've been listening to the wrong thought. If there's ought, wrong thought. If there's ought, wrong thought. I need to make a choice on what I'm going to listen to. 
I need to make a choice where I'm going to find the right voice. And the right voice is always going to come where the Lord would speak to us of the heart. Okay? Of the heart. Finding out, Lord, Lord, teach me today. Lord, seek. You know, when you seek him, this is so cool. You can sit in worship and, and you can hear nothing. Or you can sit and wor- you can come in, in worship and you can seek and you'll find. It's amazing. So let's make the, making the choice. Lord, Lord, speak. What, what's going Is there anything inside of me? I love da- David. He said, search my heart, O oh God. So there are things God speaks to our heart, but there are also but we also draw from our heart, okay? So we can put things in our heart that God did not put there. Does that make sense? And it came from something that we thought on, thought on, thought on. Why? Because Satan knows if I can get it in their heart. If I can get it in their heart, it can come about in their life. How? Because my mutter is my rudder. Because what I say, right? What I say, if I don't like what I see, change the way I speak because it'll change my view. Because my life, my tongue, the Bible talks about as being a rudder. You want your, you want your family a life to be hell? Start talking about it. You want, you want your love for your wife or your spouse to grow? Stop talking about all the things that they're not doing. Start, start, start change the way, change the way, what, what you're, make a choice. To recognize the voice, where is it coming from, right? Because there, there is, it's, I love John 10.10, 10. Satan comes to do what? So the voice is one that's come to bring destruction, but I have come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. So if this voice is producing death, or let me tell you this, makes your countenance fall, right? Uh, uh, just uh, fear, uh, heartache, death. Tune that, you gotta have to not just tune that out, you're gonna have to make a choice to fix your eyes on your fans and, 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 and tune into your coach, yeah. right? right? And, and, and look over there and say, you know what, Lord, what do you have to say about that? And recognize, put the right voice in, entertain the right voice. If you entertain the right voice, it'll have access. You'll be able to draw from that, and now you'll, your mouth will begin to speak forth. And change, and change and steer your life into a new horizon, new view. Amen. Amen. Keep going. Um, you know, we were talking this morning, too, and I said they saw the same picture. They saw the same land. They saw the same promise. They knew the same promise. But, you know, what? their words magnified what was already in their heart. Caleb and Joshua didn't just see it and be like, oh, we can. It was already what they, like he said, what they already had put in their heart. Our words are just magnifiers of what our heart is. What's coming out of my mouth is just a product of where my heart's at. So what do we see? Caleb and Joshua, it says further on, if you go into 14, Moses came. There was a lot of grumbling. They wanted, they, it says they wanted to get a new leader. They wanted to stone Joshua and Caleb. I mean, this was not just like, oh, don't, don't talk that way. I mean, for saying what God said, they wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. You think they're offended? Yeah, just... right? Causes you to do stupid stuff, right? And in uh, chapter 14, Moses, it says he went to the tent of meeting, and it says God came down. And said, man, I'm, I'm taking these people out for their doubt and unbelief. And then, you know what, Moses says, no, don't, Lord. You know, and he's, he's talking with the Lord. And the Lord says, okay, fine. None of them are going to go into the promised land. But Joshua and Caleb will enter. They were of a diff. It says that because Caleb was of a different spirit. Mm-hmm. And I want to be of that spirit who believes God. I want to be of that spirit we're of the right voice. That's right. The right voice. Putting in that right voice. Can we go to John 11, or did you want yeah, to Yeah, what, yeah. What's John 11? Lazarus. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's not go there yet. Okay. <laughs> I don't know all the Bible. No, I'm just, <laughs> just this much. Um, uh, before we go there, I think this is really uh, a, a key point that we, we need to recognize. The Bible talks about in Ephesians how uh, uh, we're not to be infants tossed to and fro. By every wind of doctrine or everything that we hear, okay, but we're to we're to be to grow up. The Bible talks about there, there. So there is a way to not be tossed to and fro 
like in the storms of life and hearing this and hearing this and hearing this. Uh, and that key to that is, is Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19. You might write this down, uh, just that reference, take a look at it. But it says, which we have an anchor, okay? We have hope. What is hope? Hope is a picture of the promise. You know what they saw? They saw the promise before them. Not the problem before them. They saw, they saw what God said. They kept what God said. They, had, they were listening to the right. Listen, thankfulness was coming out of there. God, you took us out of Egypt to this place. We get to go here. They weren't, they weren't offended. Right? Why? Because they had the right picture. Because they had a picture of what God had said, and they trusted that to be. Because unbelief comes, and it's interesting, you wrote in, in your Bible, we were talking about this this morning, how, how um, unbelief gives uh, root, or uh, what did you write down in there for offense? It's like, uh, unbelief allows offense. And I said, you know, I think it's actually offense that allows unbelief. It's really, a, it's our offense in our heart that allows us to, we get offended where we're at, and so then belief, believing stops. And I wanted to hit on this because I wanted somebody to come out of this. I heard this real strong in my heart this morning while we were um, uh, sitting together, uh, and it, this, that, you know, the Bible talks about how where there is offense, where there's strife, where there's discord, there's every evil work, because here's the deal. What happens is is the voice I listen to or entertain, I open myself up to. So here's what, here's, I want to paint this picture. My heart. There are thoughts that you've fought against for a long time. You know and you recognize them that they're wrong. There are thoughts, there are not only just thoughts, there are desires of the flesh that are not just uh, uh, the things that you've been given to, but the enemy knows I can make you fall that way or, or whatever. Whether it's, I mean, it could be one of a thousand things, evil things that you know I'm not going there, right? You know I'm not going there. And so Satan just churches the bait. Why? So you can open you up. Because if he can open you up, right, with the fence, if he can open you up, what he can get in there is every other thing. And all of a sudden, have you ever, let me just, you just put in your own mental picture. Maybe, maybe it's your life. Maybe, maybe it's somebody else. But let's, let's put in there. Have you ever seen somebody leave something offended? Yeah. Let me just put it this way. Have you ever seen somebody leave a church offended? Yeah. The place that God designed them to connect. Yeah. And then somehow they don't just like, like who are they? Or how did that other stuff get in? Or like, why? how did that originate? Offense. They lost their mind. Why? Because they gave it away. Because they gave it away. They gave away. They gave it away. If you entertain these thoughts, what you're doing is you're giving away your mind. You're giving away your choice. And now what's happening is, is we're no longer uh, uh, receiving by perception, or excuse me, by reception, receiving in our heart, but instead everything we do now in life is based upon perception, how we see. And Satan is a master. He didn't, he, I, I had this with, with one of my own kids recently, all right, uh, that, that, that when I came home early from, from hunting, I, I heard this. He said, Oh, early in the morning, I got home real late because I already killed, and, and I was like, man, this is, I'm getting home. I want to see my kids be home early. So I get home, uh, and, and I'm going to be there two days early, which is un, unreal for hunting, right? Um, and, I, and the first thing th that morning th that they say is, come walking out, they go, oh, you're here? And you know what I heard? I didn't hear what she said. Like, oh, they were surprised. What I heard was, oh. And it was a, a thought, a, a legitimate thought that I, I took. I, I got offended at my own kid. I got offended at my own kid. And I began to think about myself and how you didn't love me and I'm loving you. You ever thought about that for with somebody else or God or anything, you begin to, but you know what? Here's what I found. If I'm going to follow Christ, 
I'm going to have to, de- I'm going to, have to deny. Here's what we, the, the thought. It's, sometimes it's not even the thought that's the enemy. It's the thought that the seed that the enemy allows you to begin to think by yourself. But if you're going to follow me, he says, you're going to have to first learn this. You have to take up the cross and deny yourself. Right? Because the moment I stop, Stop denying myself and recognizing that, that with the enemy and then the, me work is the moment I've arrived. If I stop denying myself, I've arrived. And I'm fixing to depart. I can't follow. I can't follow with, with, with me in the picture. I'm going to have to be crucified. I'm going to have to take up my cross, right? I'm going to have to lay myself down. And, and you know what it took? it took? It took my wife. It took even this morning in worship. So I made the choice, make the choice, make the choice, and listen to her. But I, I was listening to the right voices. I was saying the right things. But in my heart, my choice was still, yeah, but. I wonder what poop cart I'm connected to with my, with my conjunction, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like the hitch. Yeah, but. So you wonder why your life stinks? Because you, uh, you got this conjunction. Yeah, but. You got an and. Or you got, a, you got this conjunction and you're pulling around the poop cart and you're wondering why your life stinks. It's because this, 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 that, and the other thing. And, you're pu- and it's because I heard what you said. I heard what you said, but, but, or and, or whatever. And he said this though. And it was this way, but it was this way. And so what I have done is I made the choice to hold on to that voice. You can make a choice to hold on to the wrong voice, and what happens is, is you now are at a standstill to what God desires to bring into your life. He desires to bring like what you're going to go to right now, resurrection. There's some things in the cave that are dead, 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 dead. But they got to hear, they got to hear your voice from the place that you've made a choice. Like today, you could just choose. You could just make a choice today to forgive. You could do it. You could come out. Today, you could just make a choice. I'm going to believe God. You can make the choice today to come out. You can make a choice to fix your attention to the right fans. You can make a choice to recognize, hey, that's right, I am playing on the enemy's turf. I am playing more than just my opponent, and it's all the voices of the, uh, uh, that, that are going on. All the voices, it might even just be voices of friends that are, are not what God say, has to say. You just make the choice today. Make the choice. It'll change your outcome. It'll change whether or not you come out. We'll keep going. We'll go to the next one. I want to have time for altar. Can, can you all just go ahead and come play? Um, We'll just share this verse, and then I think just go into the altar time. Um, okay, John 11. And this is, um, this is a story of Jesus um, with Lazarus. And we'll start in verse 21 here. It said, um, Martha then said to Jesus, Master, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Oh. Stop there. Voice. Voice. So Martha was offended there, but you know what that voice was telling Jesus? You didn't do something. It was a voice speaking to him. Okay, um, if you would have been here, my brother would not have uh, died. I want to stop there. Okay. You think God could have told Jesus to go there? You think Jesus could have might have got offended at God right there? Because mm. I only do what my father tells me. Well, God, you didn't tell me to come here. Mm-hmm. So how many of you know, like, you didn't come, right. and what we want to do is we want to pl- pass that you, right? Yeah. Like last night, Landon was up here on the stage, and he passed the blame to Courtney. You know, blame to me. Oh, to Evan, that's right. Yeah. No, just kidding. It's true, though. We pass the blame. It happens all the time. And that could have happened with Jesus right there right. and got him out of position right. to receive what you're going to see next. Okay, so um, Jesus said to her, uh, or he said, and even now I know that whatever you ask from God, he will grant it to you. Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. So you know what he was doing? He was answering that voice. Mm-hmm. He could have said, oh, shoot, it's too late. You're right. I should, I, I'm too late. But you know what? He answered the voice. With hope. 
Jesus said to her, I myself am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, although he may die, shall live. And whoever continues to live and believe in and has faith in me shall never die at all. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I have believed it and I do believe. You are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary, privately whispering to her, The teacher is close at hand and is asking for you. When she heard this, she sprang up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the same spot where Martha had met him. When the Jews were, who were sitting with her in the house and consoling her saw how hastily Mary had risen and gone out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to pour out her grief there. When Mary came to the place where Jesus was and saw him, she dropped down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Again, another voice. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews who came with her also sobbing, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. The Jews said, see how tenderly he loved him. But some of them said, could he not he who opened a blind man's eyes have prevented this man from dying? This is stuff, it's not just like Jesus is immune to these voices, guys. This is stuff there, he was a man. This is a man he loved. I mean, think of someone you love passing away. The, The emotions are real. He was crying. There was real, there was a real battle here. And then they're saying... If you healed someone who's blind and and now you can't even heal someone back from the dead. So there was pressure there. Um, Now Jesus again sighing repeatedly and deeply disquieted approached the tomb. It was a cave, a hole in the rock. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, exclaimed, but Lord, by this time he is decaying and throws off an offensive odor for he has been dead four days. Another voice. Too late. Now you've come, but you know what? It's too late. He's been dead four days. Jesus could have said, you know what? You're right. This is too hard. But I love this. Um, He's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you and promise you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Yes, I know you always hear and listen to me, but I have said this on account of and for the benefit of the people standing around so that they may believe that you did send me. When he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And I told him, you know what I saw there? Number one, he gave thanks. You know what that did? That silenced all the voices. It brought his focus back on his father. His father's voice. Lord, I thank you. I'm, I'm tuning this out. I'm tuning the emotions. I'm tuning the voices. I'm tuning out what it looks like. And I'm focused in on you. And I thank you that you hear me. I'm centered on you. So what? Thanksgiving. And then what do we see? He shouted with a loud voice. It wasn't just like, uh, uh, Lazarus, come out. No, what I see here is Jesus was answering that voice of death, that voice of no hope. And he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And I said, he lifted his eyes. He put his eyes and ears to the right source. Thanksgiving and faith were there. Or sorry, thanksgiving and faith were the result which brought an impossibility to a possibility. What was it? It was thankfulness and it was faith. And it wasn't just like this little, and I'm not saying you have to go around shouting. That's not the point. But I am saying there is a voice of faith. There is a voice of faith that trumps any situation going on. That bring, Thanksgiving and faith together is like that dynamic. That's what it was. It was, Lord, I thank you. I'm centered on your promise. I know you hear me. And then, boom, faith was present to do what? Bring it about. Amen. And so we're, I wanna, um, what I've seen in my heart this morning was as we close the service, I saw just that scripture, a hope, an anchor for your soul. Um, and just as I've talked about in the weeks before, but just the significance of an altar and how you lay things down on the altar, and uh, that God can consume those things. And I don't. I just saw people coming out. I saw um, uh, replacing a picture uh, of offense with uh, unity of chaos and and destruction with wholeness and peace. I saw just. Just the voices um, being laid on at the altar this morning, um, and so we're going to close. We wanted to make sure and have time for that, uh, just to, to 
you to enter your heart, you to enter the conversation and say, Lord, you know, is there something? And I know some of you, you're like, I got to lay this. I, I can't. Listen, what you do is you lay it down. And there's something powerful about just making that move to the altar and just saying, God, I give you, I give you this this morning. I give you this. Because maybe it's a, the voice uh, that you're then listening to concerning your health. It might be concerning offense. It might be concerning one of a thousand things. But, but God's saying, I want an anchor in your soul today. Because you've been up and you've been down and you've been up and you've been down. Let me tell you, you're, you're coming out. Thank you. You're coming up and you're coming out. You're coming out. And so I just believe that, that God's going to do that work. So, Father, we just thank you this morning. Just stand up. Thank you, Father. We give you our hearts this morning. I just say thank you, Father, that this morning, that as we're here, you are you're speaking clearly. And, and we have ears that hear what you are saying. Lord, thank you for this morning that, that there is an anchor. There is a picture of what you have said that, that, that even this morning, just by a work of your spirit, you're replacing in our hearts. And I just, I just speak right now, come out. Those, the, 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 the root of bitterness, come out. That offense, come out. And here, oh, that, that spirit of lack and that voice of you not enough, come out. Father, I thank you for a replacing of promise today. A replacing of promise today. And so uh, we're going to just, if you, you know, we're going to close in worship this morning, but um, maybe five, six, I don't know, just a little bit of time. And um, if that's you, you want to come down and say, God, I can just lay it at the altar. I'm talking about you laying it at his feet, right? We'd love to see that. And we'll also be over here. If you need healing in your body, the Bible says, call for the elders of the church and and they, they lay hands on you, you'd be healed. I, we just want to open up the altar this morning for whatever you've got to meet with the Lord. If you want, to, we'll want prayer, we'll be over to the side. But otherwise, go do business with God today. Amen. Amen. God bless you.